As discussed in the last part uh, and the previous video, I have a particular bucket here that I'm using to create backups or to store backups of my website. And really what I'm looking to do is uh, zip up everything within my home directory and push that to the Amazon S3 storage via a shell script and on a cron job that runs every day or every week. In fact, I don't need it every day. I'm, my site doesn't get updated that much. You know, it's not a kind of, not really required to be daily, but uh, it's as often as you need it to be, really. And you can see there are two in here already. We've got the 13th of the first and the 13th of the second. So I wanted to just go through how I've done that. And again, as I always say at the start of my videos, people who watch a lot of my videos will be sick of me saying this. I'm not a shell expert, okay? I'm, I'm the, the whole kind of point of this channel really is just uh, as I learn or as I do a particular project, I kind of just lay down what I've, what I'm working on and my thoughts. And uh, when I sort of basically kind of fix something or sort something out, I kind of then make a sh short video of it for my own reference and also so that it can help anyone looking to do similar things. So here's my uh, SSH windows using standard putty and I've made this text a little bit bigger than it would normally be just for this uh, for this tutorial. I'm not completely blind. And um, yeah, this is just my my home directory on the server. You can see I've got some old old stuff in here which I need to delete like my um, like my secure <laughs> secure key. If I, I'm going to actually assume in this case that you might probably have root access to the server or at least a fairly high level of access in order to run various things. But you probably wouldn't need it, but you might need it to install S3 command if it hasn't already been installed. Right, so if I look in, um, if I just take, go to user bin and look in there. There is, in fact, if I just do it like this, you can see here that there is S3 command and that's because I've installed that and that is the essential program to do this. It's a beautiful command line utility that um, everyone who uses Amazon S3 should have and probably a lot of people already watch, watching this video may already know about. And installing that, at least on this uh, platform here, which is a CentOS platform, is really or cent, um, is really easy. I just did it straight through, straight via yum. So I just did a yum install S3 CMD. I'm not going to redo it because it's already done it. And that, that in, installed the relevant dependencies and installed it uh, straight onto my server. No problem at all. <clears throat> and then straight after that, I think I did S3 command config. Um, config or configuration and that fires up a little sort of internal script that, that runs you through and creates a config file and the config file gets put in your home directory here so if I do a al here there is a dot s3 config a hidden file here and that's the config file that contains your amazon aws key and your AWS secret key as well, plus a few other settings that you might want to have as default. So it's really, really good because what I can do now um, is go to a, um, let me just think where I might have um, stuff stored. And if I, yeah, okay, so I've just got, a, a, I've got one file in here. put in here and that's a WAV file so if I now want to put this online into my S3 storage it's already been set up with a key remember I can just do S3 command and put and I'm going to say that file because I'm actually in the directory so that's no problem uh, you can specify there are tons and tons of parameters you can specify at the start you can specify different chunk sizes you can specify different config files for different commands and then I'm just going to do uh, s3 <clears throat> and then the name of your bucket in there I'm not sure if I need the trailing slash let me just try that All right there we go, transferring. Uh, 
And I'll just let that finish. And there we go. That's it. Done. So if I now go back to my S3 browser here and go into the bucket, then you'll see that that file is now there. Well, that was easy, wasn't it? So all I've done, really, is... create a very basic shell script and it is it is really basic there's nothing complicated in here and all it does I'll go through it just assume that you know you, you're not that familiar with this stuff uh, those of you who are will be quietly laughing to themselves saying oh my god I can't believe how simple this is so we just we just create a certain number of variables here to use later in the script date tamp, uh, date stamp user stamp which could be pulled separately but I'm just using it as my own user specifically um, our database and we have um, I've changed this for doing this tutorial actually to um, remove passwords from in here but I'll show you where that is in a second and I've got one for S3 location I'm not using that uh, all I do is I move a previous archive so anything named with a certain format I move that to separate folder because I don't want that to exist to start with because I don't want that to form part of the backup. I could exclude it specifically in the tar command but I'm going to uh, I just move it to a backups archive somewhere else on the box uh, and then I back up my database with a MySQL dump and then I compress the whole home directory here using tar czvf and now we reset the permissions on the file that's created to my user so to make sure that I can access it it gets set with certain permissions and it gets moved into my home directory just make sure it's moved into there now I delete the database backup because there was a database backup that gets created and put into that tar file and now here's the all important bit I use the s3 command and I'm just going to expand this out so you can see it I use the S3 command, USR bin, don't really need that really. You could probably just use S3 command. And then I specify the config file, going to root.s3 config. And I specify a storage class here. So it's standard infrequent access. So it's cheaper to store because I don't really want to access these uh, backups. And the multi part chunk size is set to 200 megabytes rather than the default of 15, I think. And put, and then we use the variables again in here to have the file to basically reproduce the file that's just being created and it gets put in my backup bucket under the backup folder and that is it it exits job done it takes about a minute to do and I end up with these files here being created zipped up files of my home directory containing my a copy of my SQL database and anything else in the home directory. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'm going to stick at this project and see what interesting stuff I can come up with. But uh, yeah, I think that's that's it as far as the videos I'll do on this. So thank you for watching, and I'll catch you soon. Bye.